Thank you, folks. That's so nice. I, I have to tell you, I have to thank Fred the Hammer. You know, uh, he wouldn't be allowed to play in the NFL today. He hits too hard, okay? You know, <laughs> see, we're all getting softer, you understand. And our country's getting softer. But I'll tell you what, that was the, uh, that was the good old days. So, Fred, get over here for a second, Fred. Come here. That was so nice. I love people that hit hard. We need people that hit hard. Come here. He was a hitter. He was a hitter. Oh, you know, after one or two hits, they sort of said, I don't want to catch the ball anymore, right? And a really amazing guy. Somebody that Bobby Knight has so much respect for. He said, you play this guy, it's brutal. Always. It was always tough. Coach Katie, come on out. Come here. <laughs> Coach, come on over. He, what a great man and a great family. I just met his wife, and she's an incredible. We've had so much support. So I just got a call. Lou Holtz just endorsed us. So Lou, Lou is another one. What incredible, what incredible people. Such spirit. And, you know, I, I love that you people, but sit down. We'll stay with each other for a long time. Sit down. You know, it's so nice. So often I'll say, sit down. They just refuse. You're going to sit down. This is a beautiful place, by the way. This is nice. It's nice. And we, we've had this response all over. No matter where we go in the country. We go to Dallas. We go to Alabama. We had 35,000 in Alabama. The other night we had 31,000 in Los Angeles, near the Los Angeles area. We were all over. And I'll tell you. And they were burning the American flag. Okay? You tell me. Okay? Not inside. Inside, it was a love fest. We had 31,000 people. It was incredible. But outside, they burned the American flag, and they held up other flags from other countries. And I want to tell you, that's not what we're about, you know. We're going to take good care of everyone, but it's America first now, folks. It's America first. Just remember that. Just remember that. You know... I watched television. There was a group of people. I don't even know because I'm doing another one of these at seven. I've been doing them all. But I love doing them. A friend of mine, very, very successful. I love doing them. But a friend of mine, a very, very successful guy, came with me to one. I had 24,000, 25,000 in Tampa and Tampa, Florida. And he said, how do you do that? Get before these people. I said, you know, honestly, this guy's really a successful guy. Great guy. And not because he's successful, he's great. He's one of the few. He's rich, but he's a nice guy. Most rich aren't so nice, but that's okay. But we still want them negotiating our trade deals for us, not these political hacks. Believe me. Believe me. So he said, how do you do that with so many people? I said, you know, honestly, you get before them. And it's like we're all in love. We're, we're like... We're just going to straighten out this country. We love our country. We love each other. And our rallies are the safest place you can be on earth. And, you know, you don't read that. You don't hear that. But our rallies are safe and beautiful. And there's love in the room. And it's so easy to speak when you have that kind of love in the room. And that kind, whether I'm in a place like this or an arena, no matter where you are, we want to make America great again. And I said to him, it's so easy to speak. It really is. He still didn't believe me, but believe me, it is, okay? So I appreciate you all being here, and I really appreciate, thank you, honey. I really appreciate Indiana. I really appreciate Indiana. But there was a tremendous line, and they started assembling it, and it was on Fox, and it was on all of them, CNN, but it was a huge line, and I'm not sure. I, it might be for the 7 o'clock speech, but it was this tremendous line, and they met a few young guys that were definitely, it was Cruz. Cruz was like, you know, oh, this guy, the lie. That's why we call him Lion. We call him Lion Ted. We call him Lying Ted. I never said. Did you know that Donald Trump wants to raise your taxes by 40%? And the guy said, no, he doesn't. Did you know that he's in favor of Obamacare? No, he's not. But I mean, and when he said it, he meant it. This guy, this guy knew. And it was very, and you know, he actually said, 
how's your loan doing at Goldman Sachs? That was, I thought, the coolest. <laughs> now, is that guy here with the sunglasses? I don't know if he's here or seven, but whoever he is, I thought he was very cool. I thought him and his friends, because they're not going to be buffaloed by lies, <laughs> by lies. You know, I, I, I wrote down some of the things this guy was saying, uh, Cruz, and, and it's just unbelievable that I was going to raise taxes. I have the biggest tax cut of anybody running for office by far. And in fact, if there was one criticism of my tax plan and policy, it was that I lowered taxes too much, okay? And he said, it's true. That was the one, the Wall Street Journal said, we can't afford that much of a tax decrease. And I have Cruz saying, he's going to raise your taxes 40%. It's unbelievable. Lie and Ted. Uh, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. He made a statement that Donald Trump doesn't intend to build a wall. Believe me, folks, we're building the wall. Believe me. Believe me. We're building the wall. We're building the wall. No, we're building the wall. We have no choice. Do we have a choice? We have to. <laughs> the loyalty to all of us. You know, I'm sort of just, I consider myself a messenger. I'm a good messenger. I mean, I've been doing this for nine months. These other guys have been doing it for 35 years. You know, we're boom, boom, boom. We're knocking them out, you know, like cornflakes, right? But, but honestly, the, the whole thing, it's a movement that's going on. And it's, you know, I call it a movement to competence because a lot of it's common sense. It's like getting into a great school. Often, if you like apply to Harvard or you apply to the Wharton School of Finance or you apply to Stanford or you apply, it's really hard to get in. But once you're there, it's okay. It's sort of like much easier. It's hard here to do what we're doing, but we have a mission all together. And we're going to straighten it out. We're not going to make deals like they made with Iran, where we're giving $150 billion. We get absolutely nothing. And now on top of everything, I've been saying it for a long time. You see what's happening in Iraq. It's imploding. Iran goes in, takes it over. They won't have to fire a shot. And they've been trying to do it for decades and decades and decades. And you won't have to fire a shot. We handed it to them. Should have never been there. Should have never gotten out the way Obama got out. How about that? Takes everybody immediately and announces the date. Now, the enemy said, ah, there's no way he's moving that date. Turned out he was right. And that's why I say we have to be unpredictable, especially militarily. You know, they'll ask me sometimes, yeah. We've got to be, we've got to be unpredictable. We've got to, we, we are so totally predictable and it's so embarrassing. No matter what happens, I mean, it's so embarrassing. And what we're going to do is we're going to go out and we're going to make our country so great again. And it's not going to be, we're not going to be embarrassed anymore by what happens. We're not going to be embarrassed that our 10 sailors get captured, get treated like hostages, like, like prisoners. And the only reason they gave them back, now with me, they would have given them back. Okay, with me, they would have not taken them. Believe me, they would not have taken them. But the only reason we got them back is because in two days, the money was supposed to start flowing into Iran. And you look at what's happening, and you look at how sad it is, and that we didn't get our prisoners, the original four, and there's actually another one over there, by the way, that nobody even talks about, but that we didn't get our four prisoners back before we started negotiating years ago is a disgrace. We should never negotiate under circumstances like that. Never. Never. So I marked down some of the things. You know, we have two people left. One is Kasich, a nice guy. Now, they made this stupid deal. I mean, anybody in business would not have made the deal. And by the way, since making the deal, their numbers tanked. It was stupid. It's politicians making deals. They're politicians, they're making deals. I mean, how stupid is this deal? And while I assume they didn't ink it, I still say before the ink was dry, it was violated by both parties, right? Politicians, this is what we have. These are the people that negotiate for us. These are the people that are giving us and giving away trillions and trillions of dollars. 
This is why we have deficits that are 19 trillion and it's going to be 21 trillion very, very soon, you know, with that really dumb omnibus budget. And you look at what happened with that. Then he picks Carly. Carly's perfectly nice. By the way, she fell off the stage the other day. Did anybody see that? <laughs> and Cruz didn't do anything. I was a... Even I would have helped her, okay? No, it's true. It's the weirdest thing. What? They just showed it to me coming in. I said, no, I didn't see it. They just showed it to me. And I said, wow, that's really cruel. She fell off. She just went down. She went down a long way, right? And she went down right in front of him and he was talking. He kept talking. He didn't even look like... That was a weird deal. Man. And then they were both talking. She was talking from the back and he was talking from there. They both talking. Now, that's a weird, but that was unnecessary and it was a bad thing to do. And you know, I said he set a record. First candidate in the history of this country who has no path to victory, who can't win, and he picked a vice presidential candidate. That's hard. And you've got to give her credit for accepting it. She said, I'll accept it even though there's no chance of winning. I mean, it's... A weird deal. But you know, you have so many different things. And I love seeing all of those people online. And they were there from six o'clock to Fox and CNN. They're all saying from six o'clock in the morning. All that big line, that big, huge line, thousands and thousands of people. And even here, there are thousands of people outside that wanted to get in. You people know real estate a little bit better. Congratulations. Look at the people in the front row. Pretty good, right? Pretty good. Pretty good. But I, you know, I look and I, I look at the, the difficulty of politics. I mean, you know, I've been doing this for a fairly short period of time. I've never seen lying and deception and all of the things like this. I've been in business and they're no angels. And frankly, they're much tougher people. Business is tougher. But, and, and again, they're not the greatest. You got good ones, you got bad ones, like everything else. But I've never seen lying and deception like you see in politics. It's terrible, it's terrible. It's really terrible where, where somebody will go out and hear me and watch me and watch good ovations and then say the exact opposite. No, this Trump is going to do this or Trump will never build the wall or Trump loves Obamacare. I mean, I always say, how many people have heard this? We will repeal and replace Obamacare. Then I'm listening to, right? We will repeal and replace it. Right? And then I'm hearing Cruz, that I'm hearing Cruz today. Donald Trump loves Obamacare. He will keep it. He will this. I, oh, it's so. And I want to take that television and I want to smack it. But I can't. I can't. Oh, and then I heard another good one. I picked Carly Fiorina as our vice president. Donald Trump, on the other hand, will campaign with Mike Tyson. That's true. Now, I don't know anything, but Mike was nice enough. I don't know. I heard on the internet he endorsed me. He said, I endorse Donald Trump. I will say, when you have guys like this, the coach and Fred and all of the people and Bobby Knight, such an incredible guy. What an incredible guy. What an incredible guy. And so many people, I mean, I'm really proud when you think uh, 16,500 Border Patrol agents, first time they've ever endorsed a presidential candidate they endorsed for. And Sheriff Joe, and I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing. So many of the pastors and the ministers have endorsed us. It's, uh, it's, been, it's been just an incredible experience. For me, it's been an incredible, it's been an incredible experience. And great people, I mean, just great people. And I just, I just wanna say that, you know, having done this now and having been for a long time and having so many friends in Indiana, and Bobby sort of said it better than anybody could say it. He said, Trump's gonna be a great president. See, I can't say that about myself. Well, they'll say it because that's what we wanna hear. I mean, I'm gonna bring it back. And we're gonna bring it back. But he said, Trump's gonna be a great president. And honestly, if we win Indiana, it's over. It's over. They're finished. They're gone. They're gone. And if we don't, I'll win it next week or the week after or the week after. It's fine, you know, because they have no path. 
Whereas I have a very easy path. I mean, we'll win it in the first ballot. And when I look at these guys going around and talking to delegates and buying them hot dogs and hamburgers and hotel rooms and this and that, and, and they're all playing, just so you understand, they're all playing for the second, third, fourth ballot. We're never going to get there. We are way over and way ahead of projection, and we'll, ha we'll do it on the first ballot. But if we win Indiana, it's over. So... And Bobby said, this way, Indiana can take the credit when Trump does a good job. And I want to remember that. Okay? I want to remember that. So I want to thank all of the folks, and I want to thank Bobby Knight, because, man, I'll tell you, he, he was something. He, we trekked around all over the place, and he was amazing. And you had to see the love in the room. Uh, coach Katie, same thing. He said Bobby was such a great guy. And Bobby has such respect for the coach. But when Bobby came around and we went around from place to place and people would stand up for five minutes and they just loved this guy. They like, they want to win. They want to win. He won 900 games. Think of it. Three championships. Three championships. It's tough to win those championships. He won three. 900 games he won. And, you know, you, and he won the Olympics and he won the Pan Am games, right? And he had the last undefeated season in college basketball. I mean, the, and he almost... He almost had two, and he said, Donald, have you mentioned the one before? Because, you know, the season before, I lost one game. Say that I screwed up, meaning he screwed up. I say, Coach, I don't want to say that. How could I say what you had to, what were you, like 32 and one, and I'm going to say you screwed up? He said, no, no, I put in the wrong player. Just tell them. They'll understand. I said, I refuse to say it. So I said, he wants me to say that he screwed up. Okay. Wouldn't it be nice to have a coach that screwed up and you're like 32 and one or something like that? Everybody wants that kind of a coach. So anyway, so Bobby's been great. I want to just thank him. I just want to thank everybody. It's been an incredible experience for me. And I've learned a lot. I mean, I've learned a lot. And, you know, one of the things I like to do before I go to an area, and by the way, even your governor treated me very nicely, I have to tell you. He was under pressure. He was under a lot of pressure from his, you know, supporters and from people that put up money for politicians, in all fairness, and, you know, the donors and the special interests. And you're under pressure. He said nicer things about me than he said about Cruz. Well, it's true, right? If you think about it. And I like him. I like Mike Pence. But, you know, he said nicer things about me than Cruz. And the, all of the pundits said, you know what? I think that was maybe the weakest endorsement in the history of endorsements. It's true. In fact, at the end, they had a one group had to rerun the tape just to find out who he was in. So it's sort of fun. But they're under a lot of pressure. You know, I'm self-funding my campaign, so I don't have any pressure, okay? I don't have pressure. I'm going to do what's right for you. Like Cruz tells you about uh, Wall Street and the big bad bankers and this and that and all the stuff. Now, he didn't put down on his personal financial disclosure form that he borrowed a million dollars from Citibank and Goldman Sachs. He didn't say that. He left it off, which you're not allowed to do. You know, that's a big violation. I don't know what's the, you know, what's the recourse, but it's a big violation. But, in fact, one of the guys mentioned this morning that, you know, was sort of debating him out front. What about Goldman Sachs? Guy knew what he was talking about. He left out the million dollars, didn't put it down on his personal financial disclosure form. And then he'll come and tell you about how he's going to protect you from the banks. Let me tell you. Goldman Sachs and Citibank have him totally under control, folks. Believe me, okay? He may talk, but believe me, they have him 100% under control. Me, I'm not taking money, so it's very easy, okay? So what I, what I like to do is, and it's become very depressing, but don't be depressed because we're going to turn it around. But it is, it's depressing. I ask my statisticians. I have people, they do nothing but stats. Which can't be a very exciting job, right? I wouldn't want it. They love it. They love it. Me, I wouldn't want that job. But they're good at it. And they get it right from the books. And they said, this area, which is a great area, great people, has lost one in four manufacturing jobs since 2001, the year Congress voted to put China into the World Trade Organization. Mistake. The vote gave China permanent most favored nation trading status. That gives them an advantage. Why? What are we doing? Why? And I do a lot of business with China. And I love China. China's fine. I made a lot of money with China. They have the biggest bank in the world as my tenant in Manhattan at one of my buildings. Good tenant. Pays the rent on time. <laughs> this is a serious... The bank has 400 million customers. That's a big bank. That means that Citibank... I said to the head of the bank, 
how big are you compared to, let's say, Citibank? And they said, that is like a small subsidiary. You know, it's like, it's true. It's like a little bank by comparison. But it's my tenant. Uh, I have two big buildings, Bank of America building in San Francisco and 1290 Avenue of the Americas, one of the biggest buildings in New York, biggest floor plates. And I got that through China. Not friendly, unfriendly. It was a war. And it's turned out to be a great deal with a wonderful partner. And we ended up making a fantastic deal. And they buy condos like they're, uh, like they're mashed potatoes from me. You understand? It's like pancakes. I'll take one for 10 billion. I'll take one for nine. Nothing against China. And I'm not angry at China. And I'm not angry at Mexico. And I'm not angry at India or Vietnam, which is hot as a pistol right now, taking a lot of stuff away from us. I'm not angry at Japan. They send cars over by the millions. We give them practically nothing. You talk about a trade imbalance. They're up here, we're down like below that stage. It's trade imbalance. I'm not angry at any of them. I'm angry at our leaders for being grossly incompetent and no, not knowing, right? And not knowing what they're doing because there's no reason for it. So a few more things. Uh, Indiana's lost 5,000 jobs over the last period of time. Manufacturing jobs. In the last three months, you lost 5,000 jobs. That's not good, okay? According to the last three months, you lost 5,000 jobs. Somebody else would say, oh, you're doing well. Great. According to the Federal Reserve, real median household income in the state of Indiana has declined $10,000 since 1999. That means you're working harder and you're making less. Some of you have two jobs. I understand it. You know, nobody else understood it. They're all trying to say, what are, what, what's going on with Trump? I understand it. I grew up, you know, my father was a builder in Brooklyn and Queens, and I would work on jobs. And I got to know, people say, why do you relate so well to like carpenters and electricians? I mean, I grew up with them. I know them better. Frankly, I don't like the rich people so much, if you want to know the truth. <laughs> Those are the ones I don't like as much. Not nearly as much. Uh, but look at this. This area lost about 15% of its construction jobs since the recession. The city of Indianapolis has lost one-third of its manufacturing jobs since 1990. Carrier air conditioning. Now, I've been dealing on carrier since it announced. And I guess a lot of you have heard, because unfortunately, look at all the cameras back there. They always put my speeches on live television, which is a big disadvantage, because I have to come up with a new speech every four hours, right? You can't say, it's true. It's true. Otherwise, they'll say he's a very repetitive person. Well, they only do it because of the ratings, but I do. I have to change it up. You know, these other guys, they walk around, they read the exact same speech at every single stop, right? Every single stop, they read a speech, and it's always within 30 seconds of length, and then they walk out. People fall asleep. Everyone's sleeping. Everyone goes home. Nobody votes for them. They're out of the race, you know. Me? I don't have any teleprompters. I'm up here all by myself. Okay, I'm up here all by myself. Even for victory speeches, I saw the other night, Hillary Clinton, she's got a teleprompter. And we will travel north and south and east and west. And I would say that she started screaming at the teleprompter, but I'm not allowed to say that. You know why? Now, if she was a man, I could say it. But as a woman, ladies, I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to say it. She was screaming at the teleprompter, but I will not say it, okay? <laughs> Many women told me it's terrible what she's doing. And a poll just came out one hour ago, the Rasmussen poll, where Trump is leading Hillary Clinton, okay? <laughs> leading. Trump is leading. Oh, we're going to win. We're going to win. No, I watched this cruise guy. I am the only one who can win this race. You know, it sounds like Shakespeare, right? This is like everything's always Shakespeare. Even if he's making a simple statement, I am the only one. Right? I always kid, but I'm, I'm, unfortunately, I'm telling the truth. He walks up with the Bible held high, right? Held high, the Bible, boom. Then he comes over and he starts lying like nobody I've ever seen. But he's, and by the way, it also, another poll, Wall Street Journal came out just now. 
Trump in Indiana, which is what we care about, although we do love that national poll, I have to say. In other words, winning Indiana without the rest of it, none of us are too happy. But in Indiana, Trump is over Hillary 48 to 41. Whoa. Whoa. But, but you know, Kasich, who has not had one negative ad, and he's a nice guy. I don't like his eating habits, to be totally honest. In fact, I was eating at a good restaurant today in, in, in Indianapolis, a nice, really nice place. And the owner was great. And they were serving me food. And I said, turn off all the cameras. You know the camera. I don't, I don't want to eat. But it's true. I always tell my son, little tiny bites. I tell all my kids, Ivanka, Don, Eric, Tiffany, all as they were growing up, little, little bites. And I see him, whoa. I don't get it. And I've never seen a man make so many news conferences while he's eating. He's always eating. He's never standing up having a news conference. So when I sat down, I just said, do me a favor, get those cameras away. I don't want to be. They'll say I'm copying him. I don't want that. But, you know, his standard line, and Cruz more than anybody, he said, I am the only one that can beat Hillary Clinton. He's going to get killed. <laughs> killed. So he hasn't had a negative ad. And Kasich hasn't had one negative ad because nobody cares. You know, there's no... <laughs> Listen to this. So I was saying 55,000 as of a week ago. Well, it's changed. I've had 60,000. Hard to believe. Although, if you were me, you'd believe it because every time I see one, and it's all the time. I was in Florida. And I'm telling you, I won Florida in a landslide. But I told my people there's no way I can win. I told my people the day before the election, there is no way I can win because I was there. I owned Doral. And we had this major golf tournament, you know, world championship, the Cadillac world championship. Adam Scott won. And I'm there. And I'm telling you, I, I said to my people, it's going to be embarrassing. I mean, there's no way I can win. Every single ad in Florida for weeks was a negative ad on me. And they were false ads. Well, 90%, 95%. <laughs> Maybe even 95. But they were false ads. So, many, so much lies and deception. False. But they were one after another after another. They'd have four or five ads in a row. And my people said, Mr. Trump, congratulations. You're going to win in a landslide. I said, how can I win? I got all these negative ads. I said, I'm telling you, I'm not going to win. That's my own insecurity coming out, okay? But I said, I'm not going to win. And we won by like more than 20 points. We won in a landslide. You know? Won in a landslide. And then last night, I'm here and I'm watching television. I see all these phony ads, one after another after another. You know, stop Trump or never Trump or whatever the hell they call it. And they, they formed the alliance in order to never Trump. Because you know why? Because the people putting up the money own companies and they do business with China and they do business with Mexico and they want to keep it the way it is, folks. But we're getting killed in these deals, okay? So they're putting up all this money. One guy put up $3 million. Uh, one guy owns the Chicago Cubs. I'm rooting against that team now. They own, no, no, think of it. This guy, Ricketts or something, he own, I never met him. He owns the Chicago Cubs. He's putting up four, millions. Of, I don't even know the guy. Can you imagine how badly I do if he knew me? I'd do even worse, I guess. I don't even know him. I, never, I have no idea who he is. I'd still like them to win. They're a nice team. Okay. But, but you know what? He's putting up millions. Like somebody said, three, four million dollars. I say, three, four million for what? I'll do a better job than anybody else. Why are they doing this? The only reason is people have interests that you'll never know about. And they do bet against the country. And they don't mind when the country get, loses its jobs. They don't mind when Carrier leaves 1,400 people go that are great people, moves to Mexico, makes air conditioners, sells them across the border, no tax, no nothing makes more money, okay? And the air conditioners aren't going to sell for more money. They're going to sell for the same price because they have to compete with train. I buy a lot of air conditioners. Boy, do I buy air conditioners. I buy televisions and air conditioners. I buy a lot. But they got to keep it competitive. All it is is they're going to make more money. They're going to let go of 1,400 people. And here's the difference with me. You know, for years you've been reading where the federal government is trying to stop the tremendous onslaught of companies that are leaving our country. And that means jobs, folks. It means huge money. And it means jobs. So they say, well, we'll give them low interest loans. They don't need loans. They got a lot of money. We'll give them other things. We'll give them all sorts of incentives. They don't need incentives. They don't want incentives. Let's give them a real incentive. 
Every single time they make an air conditioning unit in Mexico and send it across our now very strong border, they'll pay a 35% tax. That's all. That's all. That's all. And you know what? They'll still make money. But one of two things will happen. Either our country is going to make a hell of a lot of money because they're going to still sell them because it may be too late. You know, maybe they've started their plant. It's probably never too late. We'll get them to come back. You know, if we charge them enough, they'll start coming back. And I tell this to the politicians. Well, we like free market. Free market's great. I'm a free market guy. But not when you're getting killed. We're getting killed. I mean, look at, look at your numbers. Your num and you're doing better than a lot of states. Not a lot better. It actually surprised me when I look at some of these numbers about Indianapolis. It's losing, it's lost practically half of their jobs, their, their manufacturing jobs. Steel. Look at steel. It's being wiped out. Your coal industry is wiped out, and yet China is taking our coal. So China, and I'm going to open up clean coal, clean coal, okay? We're going to open up our coal industry again. We have miners that are incredible people. I mean, we have this president that flies to Hawaii in a 747 with the big old engines, spewing stuff in the air, and he plays golf for two and a half or three weeks. Then he gets on a 740, it's called Air Force One, comes back, and he has a, a speech on the carbon footprint. Okay? Give me a break. Give me a break. And in the meantime, our miners and our steel workers are being laid off all over the place. Okay? Not going to happen anymore, folks. Okay? It's not going to happen anymore. Not going to happen. So the numbers, I love you too. Where is that? Who is that per Oh, stand up. Oh, great first lady. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That is very nice. Thank you. So it's not going to happen anymore. We're going to be the smart people now. We're going to be the smart people. We can't continue to allow every nation in the world to think of us as fools. And you know the funny thing? They're going to like us better when we get smart. They don't even like us. Look at China. We have rebuilt China. They have taken so much money out of our country. They have rebuilt. When you have a trade, look at the trade deficit with China. $500 billion. A year. A year. $500 billion. Okay? Now, negotiated by fools... I mean, maybe they have a conflict of interest, I don't know. In which case, they'd be dishonest, not fools. Okay, that would be even worse. But negotiated by hacks, political hacks. I've got the greatest business people in the world. They're going to go and make unbelievable deals for us. We are going to turn it around. We're going to take jobs back. And you know what's going to happen? China's going to have more respect for us. They have no respect for us. They think we're a bunch of dummies. Okay? They think we're a bunch of dummies. Now, I've negotiated a lot with China, as I told you. And they come in waves. They don't come with one person. They come with 20 people. Every one of them has 180 IQ. And if one makes a mistake, another one, another one. They have like, it's like a catch basin. And we'll have some dope sitting there negotiating. And then we wonder why, why we, we're doing so badly. I got people that are better than anybody. They're the best in the world. They're very rich people. They don't want money. They don't want anything. They want to play the chess game. You know, they like it. They want to play the game. And you know, those deals are bigger than any corporate deal. A deal like that trade with China, you can take all your steel companies, everything else, put them together. It's like a peanut compared to it. These people would love to do it. And they, they want to do it for their ego. They actually love the country. Some of these guys are, you know, not the nicest people and some are fantastic people. Carl Icahn endorsed me, great businessman. Other people endorsed me, great business people. And we want to give it to our best. And I know the best negotiators. I know guys that are overrated. I know people that are underrated that you never heard of that are better than anybody. But we're going to have great, great business people. So think of China. They've stripped our country. And, you know, we owe them $1.8 trillion, right? Does anybody know that? We owe them on top of... So they take our jobs. They take our money. And we owe them $1.8 trillion. That's like a magic act in reverse. I want some of the magic act, but we're going to turn it around. China has no respect for us. We give them state dinner. Their leaders come in. We give them state dinners at the White House. And I said, don't do that. Let them come in to negotiate. What are you doing? I actually jokingly said, let's take them to a McDonald's. We'll have McDonald's and we'll get back to negotiation. Seriously, what are we doing? What are we doing? 
We're honoring people. And again, I get along great with China. I love, they're, they're all great. I'm just so angry at our leaders for being so incompetent and for being so stupid, okay? For being so stupid. So we have rebuilt China, and they've done it to Europe in a much smaller way, but we have rebuilt China, and bridges, and tunnels, and you've never seen anything like it. You go to China, they have highways like you've never seen. You'll see airports. And also, you know, you look at other places. You look at places in the Middle East. You look at places that you've never seen anything like what's going on. We're like a third world country, and we're the ones that should be at the top, and we're at the bottom. Our educational system's no good. Out of 30 countries, we're ranked 30th. You have Sweden, you have Norway, you have Denmark, you have China, you have Japan, you have other countries that are all in the top five and 10. We're number 30. And yet we spend more per pupil than any other country by so much that there is no second place. There's no second place. It's so far behind us. And yet we're 30 because we have this Common Core is a disaster, but it's even beyond that. We're gonna get rid of Common Core, bring it local, and all of that. You know, I always say that I spent less money on the campaign than any other candidate, any other certainly major candidate, but I spent far less money. Although I'm in for like 40 million bucks, it's not peanuts, it's still a lot of money, right? But you gotta see this guy, I mean, Jeb Bush had a thing like 168 million. He's been out of here for months, right? He was getting nothing. And I wouldn't bring up his name, except he was nasty the other day. They interviewed him. What do you think of Trump? Well, he did call me a phenomena. That, that was the only good thing. Other than that, it wasn't so good. I said, what's he saying bad about me? He's out of the race. He should be saying positive. Or I wouldn't bring him up. But when they say bad about me, you know, don't we agree? They say bad about me, I say bad about them. Who the hell cares? But he said nasty things. He said, he is not a true conservative. Who cares? We want to straighten out our country. You know, a true conservative. What's a true conservative? He is not a true conservative. He always said that. He is not a true conservative. And I say, folks, first of all, I am a conservative. But they wouldn't say I'm conservative on trade. Because a conservative is supposed to want free trade. It doesn't matter how badly you get ripped off. It doesn't matter that this country is losing all of its jobs, all of its money, we're third world status. It doesn't make any difference, National Review. We will stay true to the core and we will let other countries continue to rip us off because we want to remain a true conservative and we want free trade. But I like free trade too. The problem is we don't have people that are smart negotiating our deals, okay? You don't. So therefore, we can't do that right now, I'm sorry. Maybe there'll be a time when we can go back to free trade. But you can't have free trade when China, and others, but China is the biggest abuser. China is a world-class grandmaster chess player, and they're playing against checker players that are not good at it. That's our people. They're world-class grandmasters. They devalue their currency. Every time they devalue, I just see dollar signs pouring out of the country. They're not supposed to be doing that. But Obama doesn't know what's happening, and he's too busy doing other things, including playing golf, and whatever, and he allows it to happen. About six months ago, I'll never forget, I said, well, they'll never be able to devalue again. That was two years ago. And then they did the greatest evaluation in the last 20 years. Six months ago, five months ago. And a massive devaluation which meant, let's take more money out of the United States. We're gonna take more, our economy's going a little bit bad, let's take more money out of the United States. And we let them get away with it. We can't let that happen. Just remember, just remember, they're taking that money from us mostly. They're taking it out of our country. They're taking it out of our hide. They're taking it out of our jobs. We're, we're losing everything. So we have to fight back. Now, am I a free trader? Absolutely. Will I allow our country to be ripped off for years and years to come because I want to say I'm a free trader? Absolutely not, folks. Absolutely not. I won't do it. And once they hear, <laughs> a week ago, I get a letter from high officials at China. 
And it was called in the Wall Street Journal. Somebody called me. They wanted a response to the letter. And it was a letter of protest that we do not like the rhetoric of Donald Trump. I was so happy because they've never complained before. <laughs> they've never complained before. And they wanted a response. And my response was, yes, here's my response. Tell whoever wrote the letter, the Minister of Finance, one of the top people in China, wrote a letter, sort of a letter of protest, was angry that our partnership with the United States, partnership, I don't want that partnership. I want a partnership that works, not a partnership where we're getting ripped for 505 billion, to be exact, dollars, right? Our partnership with the United States is in jeopardy. Well, maybe we're better off not having that partnership. That's another way you can look at it, okay? So, and these eggheads that you watch on television, and believe me, I'm much smarter than they are, okay, just so you understand. You know, they call them the elite. The elite. I have a nicer apartment than they do. I have a nicer plane than they do. They're elite. Why are they elite? We're elite, folks. We're elite. We're all elite, okay? They're not elite. They always talk about the elite. The elite. Half of them, I won't go into it, but... Very dishonest people. And some are true believers. And really, some are true believers. And they're wrong. They're wrong. We can't afford it anymore. And I tell the story. The last couple of times I told this story about a friend of mine. He's unbelievable. He's dying. He was supposed to have died a year ago. He's just a physically and mentally very strong person. And he's a really good guy. Tough guy, though. Really tough. And he was supposed to have died a year ago. And he keeps hanging on. And I call, and every day, the doctor told me a year ago, good doctor, he said he's... Mr. Trump, he won't be around for another month, if he's lucky. That's too bad. And he's still living. That was a year ago. And I'd say, I say, I sort of equate it to our country. And I call him. And I say, how you doing? And he said, I'm okay. I'm doing good. I feel better. I say, it's amazing. I said, I love you. You're so incredible. You're tough, man. I love tough. Coach is tough. Bobby Knight is tough. Fred is tough. People are tough. And they're good. I mean, it's just, we need toughness. We need a certain toughness, right? We need a toughness. But in a certain way, I equate it to our country. Because our country is like we've been abused for years and years and years. We've been losing to China for years. We've been losing to Japan with the cars. They send in millions of cars. We send them wheat. We send them nothing, practically. The trade imbalance is massive. I, I look at what's going on, and I, I sort of equate our country to that. We just keep hanging on, hanging on. But in the meantime, you people are making less money, and we just said it. You're making less money than you were making 20 years ago, 18 years ago, to be exact. I probably 20, probably 25, and working harder. But I related him all of a sudden to the country, how strong, how incredible our country is. To be in a position that we can afford to be abused by everybody in the world like that, and we're still here. It's incredible. How great will we be when we get it straightened out? And they're gonna, they're gonna be fine. They're gonna be fine with it. So China is our number one abuser, and, and I don't blame them, because they can get away with it, but China is our number one abuser. But what are they doing? They're building a massive, military fortress in the middle of the South China Sea, right? They're not supposed to be doing that. They're not supposed to be doing that. Why are they doing that? They have no respect for our president. They have no respect for our country. They're not supposed to be doing that. Now, should we retaliate? The way we retaliate is economically, I don't think we want to start, you know, doing anything for that. And then you also say, well, it affects Japan. It affects other countries. And we defend Japan. And I like Japan. I like the people of Japan. I have a lot of friends in Japan. But we defend Japan. We defend South Korea. We defend Germany. A lot of people didn't know this. I don't know. Do you know we defend Germany? Do you know that we're defending Germany? We are defending Germany. We're defending Japan. Japan went in and beat the hell out of China many years ago, right? Japan went in and did a big number on Korea. I mean, we're defending. We are defending Japan. And that's okay. Because why should we let them start building up? But you know what we're losing on these deals? We are defending the world. We're defending Germany, Japan, South Korea. South Korea is a monster economically. You want a television? It's South Korea. You want air conditioning? You want anything? You got to order. The biggest ships are made in South Korea. We defend them. 
We have 28,000 soldiers on the border, right? 28,000 between North and South, the maniac. I call him the maniac. And we got to do something about that. And by the way, China can do it with a phone call, okay? They can do it with a phone call. All we have to do is say, got to do it. Got to do it, folks. You better do it. This guy's playing with nuclear. It's our biggest problem. You know, Obama thinks our biggest problem is global warming. Can you believe this? No, it's true. I heard it and I said, no, no, that's a joke. Who told that joke? That sounds very, was that Jimmy Fallon? Was that Jimmy Kimmel? Who told that joke? That's very, no, no, that's not a joke. And then I went and he really meant it. Our biggest problem is global warming of the nuclear variety. And we better be damn careful. We better be damn careful. We better be very, very careful. So you look at what's going on, and we defend all these people. We defend Saudi Arabia. Now, until the oil went down, and they're still making a fortune, but until the oil went down, they were making $1 billion a day. $1 billion a day! We defend them. And we have military bases where we pay the rent. We pay rent. Okay? Think of it. We pay rent. They probably negotiate. Well, we'll give you a good deal. Pay us what? Pay us. We're, we're paying rent. What's going on? How stupid, how stupid are these people? How stupid? A billion dollars a day. And I have many friends in Saudi Arabia. They're good people. Talk about people buying apartments. I mean, they seriously, they got so much money, they don't know what to do. They make my plane look small. I'm very embarrassed. <laughs> they wouldn't be there, honestly. They wouldn't be there for two weeks if we didn't defend them. You look at what's going on with Iran. Iran's now taking over Iraq. Look at the rioting in Iraq, just like I predicted. I'm really good at this stuff. You know, they'll say Donald Trump, and they'll never put in what I said. For instance, they say, Donald Trump wants Japan to arm and wants Japan to go nuclear. No, I never said that. I said, I want them to pay us to defend them. And if they won't, perhaps someday they're just going to have to go it alone, folks, because we can't continue to be the policemen of the world. The dishonest press, of which many of those cameras are rolling right now, they're the most dishonest human beings. I don't know, Ted Cruz is right up there. These are the most dishonest human beings in the world. I watched what I say, and I say it very carefully. I'm like, smart. I say it carefully. And I always say, they have to pay. I don't want to make fortune. I just want, you got to reimburse us. You got to help us out. We owe 19 trillion, soon to be 21 trillion. You got to take care of us. Somebody was saying the other day, a general was on television. First of all, a general should not be on television. I don't want our generals on television. I will prohibit them. I don't want them saying things like, our nation has never been so ill prepared. I don't want, even though it's true, I don't want the enemy knowing that. I want to build it up before they find out. No, I don't want them going on television. Our generals. Our generals. You think General George Patton or General Douglas MacArthur, do you think they'd be on television saying about how weak we are? Number one, they wouldn't be on television because they'd be knocking the hell out of the enemy. They wouldn't have time, okay? But I mean, I see uh, a certain general, I don't want to mention his name because he's a high quality guy. He's getting ready to leave a, a year ago. And he said, we are less prepared now, our army, less prepared now that at any point, and I think he said in our history, now that's a long time. Let's assume in the last 30, 40 years, but I think he said in our history. So assuming that's true, which I believe it is, I don't want everybody to know about it. They did a piece on 60 Minutes. They talked about our nuclear arsenal. Did anyone see that? It was a disaster. Talking about the phones don't work. The equipment's old. We don't know if anything works. I don't want people to know about it, but we got to fix it, folks. We got to fix it. We never want to use it. We never want to use it. We never want to use nuclear. But you know what? There are nine countries right now that have it. There are other people trying to get it. We at least have to be prepared. I never want to, I'm the one that didn't want to go into Iraq. You know, a lot of people say Trump is definitely the toughest guy of all the candidates. Great, big deal. I hope I'm the smartest because smarter, but the combination is good, but he's tough. He may have 
a quick finger. I'll have the slowest finger you, you can imagine. I'll be the slowest. Again, that's why I tell. No wreck. We did it. Take the oil. We didn't do it. When we're leaving, I said, take the oil. You know, if we took the oil, ISIS wouldn't have been able to fuel themselves. Do you know, Libya, which is totally Hillary, Hillary Clinton, that was her brilliant thing. I mean, this woman is a disaster, okay? She's a disaster. You know, no, no, she's a disaster. You know what Bernie Sanders said? She's essentially not equipped to be president. I mean, you know, they stopped him very, very quickly. They stopped, they stopped him. Don't say these things. You're going to give Trump ideas. Believe me, I got him already. I got him. I got him. He said, I mean, he said she's not qualified to be president. He said that. I said, tell me, tell me he didn't say that. That's too good to be true. He said, I mean, look at this. I wrote, because I want the exact. He said, not qualified to be president. Now, that's a big stretch. But he said, she suffers from bad judgment. It's true. It's true. Emails, bad judgment. Iraq, voted yes, bad judgment. Libya, bad judgment. All bad judgment. So now what's happened, Libya has great oil. Gaddafi. Gaddafi, well, she wanted, hey, she wanted, she wanted to get rid of Gaddafi. She wanted to get rid of Gaddafi. And they wanted to get rid of Saddam Hussein. You know what they had in common? One thing they had in common. They killed terrorists, right? But look at Libya. Look at Libya. Oil that's so pure. And ISIS has it now. ISIS has it. We don't do anything about it. And the oil that ISIS has outside of Libya they're making a lot of money. We didn't take the oil. We should have taken the oil. But they let Gaddafi, I mean, why? Would we have been better off if our people didn't do anything? They killed terrorists. So we've got to get smart. We've got to get smart and we've got to get smart fast. And we have to start investing money and we have to get ISIS and we have to get ISIS out and we have to build our military. We have to build our military, which is totally depleted. And we have to take care of our vets who have been treated worse than illegal immigrants. We have to take care of our vets. Have to take care of our vets, our greatest people. So here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. I mean, somebody gave me a hard time on Saddam Hussein. Well, he was a bad man. I know he was a bad man, but he controlled that region. And frankly, he didn't let happen what's happening now. Take a look at Iraq. Turn on your televisions. They're rioting in Iraq. They took over the whole thing. It's a total disaster. And you take a look at Libya. You take a look at what's going on. Look at the oil that's pouring out, funding wars all over the place. And we don't do anything about it. So here's what we're going to do. You're going to remember in five years and 30 years, hopefully in 50 years if you're young enough and healthy enough. But you're going to remember this day. But more importantly, you're going to remember tomorrow. Because tomorrow we've got to get out and vote. Tomorrow is so important. Tomorrow is so important. A guy like Ted Cruz can never do He doesn't have the temperament. He doesn't have the temperament, believe it or not. A guy like Ted Cruz cannot do it. Casey can't do it. I call him one in 42. He's won one race in 42. That was Ohio. And I would have won if I went there for two more days in campaign. But they gave me a dirty poll in Florida. And I said, I'll better stay in Florida. So I won Florida easily and I should have gone to, you know, frankly, you know that story. But I should have gone back to Ohio. I would have won. Then I could have said he's 0 for 42 or whatever the number is. It keeps increasing every week. But I will promise you one thing. We will be the smart country from now on, not the dummies, okay? Not the dummies. Because this is a movement that's going on. We have a movement going on, the likes of which this country has never seen, they say. Time Magazine, many covers of what's going on with the movement. I'm the messenger, this is the movement. And it's a movement like we've never, like we've never seen, like they've never seen. Bill O'Reilly said the other night that in his lifetime, this is the greatest phenomena, political phenomena that he's ever seen, what's happened with Trump and us. That's a big statement. Smart guy, tough guy. And many people have said the same thing. 
But I say we have to win. And I don't just mean nomination. We'll beat Hillary. That's why I was so happy with that poll. Because these guys won't beat Hillary. They won't beat her. As soon as Kasich gets the first negative ad, I told you, 60,000. It's up to now 60,000. As soon as Kasich gets the first negative ad, boom. As soon as Cruz gets some negative ads, boom. I withstood 60,000 negative ads. I mean, one thing, you know me, folks. Man, do you know me. But 60,000, 100 million dollars of negative ads, and I'm beating Hillary in the last polls, and the other ones were tied. But, but, and I haven't started. Folks, and I haven't started yet. Don't forget, senators, governors, top people, smart people, 17, boom, boom, Walker gone, this one gone, Bush gone, low energy, Bush gone, all gone, all gone. Smart people, Dr. Ben Carson, who endorsed me, smart guy, great guy, he endorsed me, great guy. Chris Christie, great guy, he endorsed me. But all smart people. And I, I, now I'm going to start focusing on Hillary. That's going to be so easy. It's going to be so great. It's going to be so great. Bad judgment. Crooked Hillary. Remember? Crooked Hillary. Bad judgment. I didn't say it. Ben, you know, I didn't say it. A lot of people said it. A lot of people brought it to my attention. Ben brought it to my attention. Other did. But it was said by Bernie. So I don't, I can't take any. Can I take heed if Bernie said it? So here's the story. Bernie said, bad judgment. And it's true. Look at the email scandal. That's bad judgment. You'd almost say, what is the purpose of doing it? It's just her. It's bad, bad judgment. It's also criminal, by the way, and a lot of bad things should happen. But we'll find out. We'll find out. It's a very criminal act. A lot of people have suffered greatly for doing much less. So here's the story. Hopefully tomorrow, everybody here, and you'll bring 10 people with you. Everybody. We'll go and vote 20. I like that. Thing. I like that. Thing. And by the way, you think they have the bad seats. Actually, they have the best. You people have better locations and can see better, but they're going to be famous tomorrow because they're behind. You, you understand. They'll be so famous, they'll be out to Hollywood. But hopefully, you'll be out to vote. And you're going to look back, and you're going to say, in many years from now, it was the greatest vote that you've ever cast because our country will start winning again. We're going to win with our military. We're going to knock out ISIS. Have to do it. Have to do it. Boom, they're cutting. Have to do it. We're going to win with our vets. We're going to take care of them. We're going to take proper care of our vets. These are our great people. We're going to win with education, Common Core out, bring it local. We're going to win, win, win. We're going to get rid of Obamacare. We're going to replace it with something absolutely great and for much less money. We're going to win at the border. We're going to build the wall. The wall will be built. Mexico will pay for the wall 100%. 100%. Mexico will pay for the wall. Now they're accepting it already. Now they're just saying about paying. The other day they said, well, maybe the wall gets built. Well, a year ago, they're saying, we'll never allow it. Well, now they're saying, we'll allow it, but we'll never pay. I said, they'll pay. You watch. By the way, remember this. 58, 58 billion dollar trade deficit with Mexico, right? The wall's going to cost 10 billion. Anybody that's in business, or you don't have to be in business, when you hear those numbers, it's real easy, folks, okay? Real easy. Mexico will pay for the wall, okay? Just remember that. And, and we're going to make... From the worst trade deals ever made in the history of the world, we're going to make great trade deals. And we're going to bring our jobs back to Indiana and other places in our country. And we're going to become a dynamic economy again. And we're going to become a great country again. And what's going to be, folks, it's going to be America first. Every deal is going to be America first. We want to work with people. But it's going to be America first. And we will make, and I promise, we will make America great again. Go out and vote. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.